All right, so now the last thing you may have noticed we have an issue to deal with is we have to make these user datas work. How are we going to easily make user datas? Well, let's just make a quick function to bind int Lua make color Lua state. How are these colors going to get into Lua? That's the issue. Well, we can do it actually pretty easily. Um, we'll just do ba ba do. And of course, it's going to need a destroy color um, pair as well. I believe. Hold on, let me think about this. All right. So, um, what we can do here is Lua. Or whoops, color p equals um, color. Whoops, don't need that. Equals new color. Um, P R equals Lua to integer. You can also take something and convert it to an integer from Lua two and three. Now in this case, like up here, I was using the negatives uh, to access from the top of the stack. The reason I'm allowed to use positives here to access from the bottom is that any time a new um, uh, function is entered into, any time the uh, uh, a function that was registered is entered into uh, is directly whenever it's entered into directly through the state whenever the state calls this function it will create a new version of the stack starting from one and then it will get rid of that new version of the stack and go back to an older version of the stack later it's kind of a complicated process to explain right now without pictures but there we can uh, make this function that will take in three numbers and convert it to um, a user data and then we have to delete it Problem is, this is going to um, this is going to cause us a bit of a hassle, because now what I would like to have been able to do is define my uh, color palettes like so: fun or uh, da -da -da. say basic equals um, colors function return. Maybe I make a uh, local definition real quick called C, which is just the make color function. I would like to just go C and then, you know, 255, 255, 255, and then um, C000, C00255, uh, and then finally C25500. Zero, zero. I'd like to be able to do that. That's exactly what I need to do but um, I am now creating these objects and there's nothing that's going to delete them that's an issue but it shouldn't be an issue because Lua has a garbage collector built in anything that I make in Lua anytime I make a number or a table or a function and then I lose my reference to it that means if I do something like this um, a equals table and then maybe I add some stuff to table so that it's all filled with a bunch of data. It's taking up a lot of space. And then I say A equals a new table. And I do something different with this new table. The the old table is completely inaccessible. All the data I added to it should be deleted. Um, and so Lua has what's called a garbage collector that will eventually realize that that stuff is, it will pretty quickly actually realize that, that stuff is um, no longer needed. Nobody can get to that data. So since there's no way to access it, might as well delete it. Um, so it will. It'll delete that. I should be able to take advantage of that feature for my objects. And there's a feature for that um, uh, to allow Lua to garbage collect your user data. You might have noticed that I've been saying Lua push light user data. Um, actually, I forgot to right here. Push light user data. And that's the main that's the main thing here. There's actually two kinds of user data in Lua. Um, let me do a quick stop for time. All right, this will be a long one then. So, two kinds of user data in Lua. We have light user data and full user data. A light user data is when I have a pointer to something. I've created an object in C++ and I've got a pointer to it and I say, here's the pointer. I give it the pointer. If I make a full user data, what I actually do is I allow Lua to construct the object. I allow Lua to allocate space and to put it inside its garbage collector so that once it's unaccessible, 
you know, according to the rules, once it can be thrown away, Lou can throw it away. So, I want to take advantage of that. Let's see what changes I have to make to the system in order to eliminate the need for destroy color. I can do Lua new user data. That's the trick. By, by saying Lua new user data instead of just new color, I'm saying to Lua, allocate this amount of space. It's allocating the space um, that I tell it to allocate, and I'm telling it to allocate enough space for a color object. So, um, it'll create the space and then return a pointer and I'll call that pointer my uh, pointer to the color so there we go now we have a full user data um, we don't need to delete it manually we can just um, oh, let me also register while I'm talking we can just rely on Lua to delete the object when it's uh, no longer usable when it's time to garbage collect it and if we don't want memory leaks, Lua can handle this for us now. Um, there's actually many other advantages to using a light user data, um, but we won't get into those a whole lot until we learn more about Lua in the Lua tutorials. Then we can come back and do all much more advanced stuff. But in its simplest form, um, this allows us to uh, take advantage of Lua's garbage collector. Now the only disadvantage that you might initially notice is that this means we aren't controlling the construction, but that's not true. We're not controlling the allocation. If we know how to use the um, the placement new operator, we can still call the constructor, which is something we should do. We can do this. So what is this weird syntax? This is the placement new. Instead of just being a new where I allocate space and then construct an object inside of it and return a pointer to that object, this is a new that says look, I've already got the space. I, I, uh, I've got a pointer to that space right here. So P is a pointer to the space that this object needs to go in. Then I say, um, here's the constructor you should call. So I still tell it which constructor to call. And it'll, like, instead of creating new space and constructing an object inside it, it takes the existing space and constructs the object right there in that position in memory. Now this is useful um, for cases like this where someone else is going to control the allocation and we still need to use our constructors so this allows us to use constructors now this um, particular uh, structure doesn't use a constructor at all so we can actually skip that but in a lot of cases um, the proper thing to do and actually I will leave it since it's proper and it's a good example is to call the constructor um, for a while what I tried to do was I made um, instead of constructors I used uh, constructor functions like I made a function that I would Pass new, uh, pass the new pointers into to construct these objects after Lua allocated them, but because of the fact that you can't just um, like if you're using someone else's library and you want to bind something from another library, you need to be able to use their constructors. So I eventually learned how to do this, and this is a much better solution. It's very C++ friendly, and it works with this allocator. So now we finally have our good solution. We can make this our basic color palette and to make new color palettes I'll just copy this table and change the numbers here to make them um, more interesting um, maybe for this one we'll go with something like this who knows doesn't really matter I'm just making stuff up okay so there we go that's um that's two things in one basically uh, We've learned how to make um, a function that will call a um, C or a Lua function. We learned how to uh, do a lot of stack manipulation. We learned about um, accessing things in the global table. We learned about accessing things inside other tables um, using functions like get table. And there's actually many other functions for convenience of accessing things inside tables and setting things inside tables from C and you'd have to read through or at least search through the um, the documentation to really learn a lot of these stack manipulation functions we uh, saw some more about how the call function works how to pick which function which Lua function we're going to call that's just to manipulate the stack so that we get the correct function right here and so let's uh, let's follow this through this logic through right once before we're done if I call this function Lua color palette, and I give it uh, the state, Lua state, and then I give it the uh, 
I give it the name of the color palette I want, maybe basic, and I give it a pointer to the color, the, uh, I give it a pointer to the palette so that it can put those values into the palette. I give it a reference to the palette anyway. Um, first thing it'll do is go call get global on the name. So if I pass basic here, get global should return this table here, which is paired up with um, basic, and basic is in the global space. So great basic is in the global table, and basic is paired up with this table. So this table gets uh, put on a stack when I call get global. Now that's the table that I wrote right there. Next I push onto the stack the string colors. So now there are two objects on the stack, the table that I was just point highlighting for you, and a string colors. Now if I call get table and I put negative two as the index, negative two refers to this table, so it's gonna look inside that table and I actually made a mistake right there. Um, mistake I made was that um, calling get table does not remove the table from the stack, so this table is still actually there. And I'll have to pop five off. So anyway, um, you call get table, and it replaces the key which I pa pushed here as a string, and gives you a function. This um, this way of getting things from a table is useful because maybe um, like some a uh, function like this, I can only use strings to access. Uh, tables, but with this, I could push an integer there and get my and then get something from the table. I could have another table there, so I can use a table key and use that in C++. So that's kind of uh, one thing to think about in the stack manipulation stuff. And that uh, this um, replaces the key with the value. So the value is let's check the value inside this table paired up with the string colors is the this function. So now this function has replaced this table on the stack. Now, what happens next? The C++ function says, uh, once you've got that function, just go ahead and call it. There's no arguments to that function, so call it. So when that gets called, now we're looking at this, what happens? Well, all that happens is um, these four functions, the, or the C function gets called four times, and each of those results gets returned. What happens when the C function is called? Well, that's the make color function. The make color function right here will create the new user data. We looked at how we can use this kind of new user data for invoking the garbage collector. Um, we uh, fill it up with the integers that we passed it, like here, 255, 255, 255. And again, integer, like any other two, uh, Lua two certain object function, it doesn't throw an error if it's not an integer on the stack. If I put 0.5 on the stack and I say Lua two integer, it'll just round it to zero. That's all that function is for, is rounding to, uh, to an integer. Uh, whatever number you find on the stack. So we construct a new uh, user data, a full user data this time, and we fill it up with the data that will correctly um, correspond with the the color we want. Um, and then we return that. So now this C function here is actually returning our color. So it returns this full user data that is containing these numbers here. And then once we've constructed four of those, they're all returned together, and this, of course, is where we specify we were aware it would return four, so it gets adjusted properly. We get the four um, items we need on the stack, the four colors. Now, here's an interesting thing that I kind of met skipped over, but if I put a three here, this one just won't go on the stack. It'll ignore the fourth item, and if there's five items being returned and I only want four, I'll get four, and the fifth one will be ignored, etc. Um, if I ask for four items and only three get returned, the fourth will be nil. Anyway, um, next thing I do is I take this array here that I was looking at, this color palette reference, and I fill it up with pointers or the objects for the correct colors. Each of these now is um, each of these now is um, like negative four is the color one negative three is color two, negative two is color three, negative one is color four. So we get the correct colors into the color palette. Finally, we return the stack back to it w the way it was before we called this. Now, we've, we've spent a lot of time on this, so I'm going to leave it up to you to test it and tell me if I broke something here. But um, if you uh, do a little more work, this should be able to do exactly what I described it to be able to do. All right, so... See you guys next time.